Hey, this is Craig Carter from Interplay Learning, and today we're going to be discussing the best practices for implementing the Electricity for HVAC simulation. The feedback on this product is actually pretty startling from instructors, which you know, really tells us that it does hit a pain point of your newer students in your program. This simulation is focused on expediting the necessary electrical foundation of an HVAC technician. I really want to start this conversation, though, by just showing the breadth of the simulation. It covers circuit theory, wiring diagrams, as well as two of our four troubleshooting simulations. But inside the circuit theory and wiring diagrams, you have an assortment of different motors and faults that make the exploration potential almost endless. As you have, as you have seen in, in, in videos or by using it yourself, you have the ability to simulate changes to a vast assortment of differing diagrams. I though just really want to go back to the word exploration that I use. I feel the word fits the simulation impeccably well because a major advantage of this entire simulation is that it allows students to learn these abstract concepts by by doing and not just by reading or even drawing. It allows students to learn by way of asking questions, testing them out, and finding answers for themselves. I'm now going to transition to the focus of this video, which is, is really just to provide instructors with an easy way to implement this into your classroom and your curriculum. You know, we want to make sure you get as much out of this simulation as possible, and sometimes uh, a few ideas doesn't hurt. I've broken down the best practices into three groups, in-class, homework, and grading. Let's get started on the in-class concepts. The first easy way to use these simulators is a presentation teaching tool. Just think how many drawings on a whiteboard or a chalkboard you've done over the years. Hopefully that now gets greatly reduced. For all our simulations, I think you're given an amazing interactive and visible training tool that's not just for homework and possibly it is actually best used as a teaching tool. With the Electricity for HVAC product, we have a wiring diagrams as well as actual simulations. Depending on how large your screen is, you could pull them both up onto your screen, and now you can really bring the theoretical wiring diagrams to real life. You could show them what they're looking at at the wiring diagram on the actual simulated piece of equipment. This is even easier when you have the full HVAC sim that has six pieces of equipment. Now we're going to dig into how the students can use these to explore during class. If students have access to computers during class or can bring their own, then the classroom can really come alive using these simulations. For example, you could use a sample diagram where you give students a scenario. They need to make a hypothesis, then they go into their simulator and test for results. The scenarios can be rela related to changes in space, temperature, faults that are set, the specific wiring diagram that's in use. By letting the students hypothesize, then explore, the students get to learn by doing, which is amazing for information retention. Here's a sample diagram to structure the lesson. In many ways, this acts as actually an interactive lab where students get to explore themselves and you can walk around and ask individual questions to students to get a real good test for understanding of every member of the class. Now we'll transition to how the simulations act as a great homework tool. Simulations in general help extend the lab by actually allowing students to take the materials home with them, which usually is, is not always the case, as you can imagine. The Electricity for HVAC simulations most basic homework tool are questions related to each theory or wiring module. There are over 50 questions in the bank, so you can repeatedly ask students to do 10 questions, or they can continue to review past concept by doing these modules throughout the year. There's also a simple, uh, simple to understand achievement system that allows the students to understand how they're doing from uh, novice to guru mode. As well for homework, you can use a similar concept as we used in class by giving the students a set of circumstances that they need to explore. They then can report back their findings. You may also uh, uh, have other homework alternatives that the diary simulations can help you out with. As well, just like in our traditional HVAC training simulation, you can assign the students troubleshooting faults for the two pieces of equipment. 
By choosing specific faults in the instructor section, students will then be able to go in on, on their end and they'll complete the given faults. As I always like to note, the students do not know which faults they're assigned to uh, as they are focusing on their troubleshooting strategies. As usual, now we'll get into grading, and that's everybody's favorite part. There are a few ways to easily use the different modules as gradable materials for the students. First, instructors can easily check the number of questions the students got on their last quiz. Also, if you assign faults for the students to do, you can easily export this information to your computer via Excel. Lastly, as we showed earlier, as students answer the 10 quiz questions, the greater percent they get right, they receive an achievement score from apprentice all the way to guru. As an instructor, you can go in and see each student's current level. For example, one way you could incorporate this very easily is that, let's say, by three months into class, the students need to be at this level, for example, guru or expert. And maybe guru would get them an A, expert would get them a B. There's no hard and fast rule as to how you have to use grades in your curriculum. As you get more used to the simulations after a term or two, you will know exactly how these fit into your curriculum and best ways for you to grade them. Always, I, I, I hope you were able to take away something uh, new for your class today. And I always want you to feel like you can reach out to us here at Interplay. Please email it, me at ccarter at interplay-learning.com with any questions. We also have a link to some great teacher resources, including correlation guides with the text, a best practice guide, and some onboarding materials. Thank you all so much for attending, and have a great day.